Boston Comic Con, presented by Chevy. Anime. It's usually made for Japanese audiences, but people all over the world are into it. Like, really into it. In the US, anime didn't find a wide audience until the 1990s. But in Japan, it's a tradition that goes back at least 100 years. But before there was anime, there was manga. And it's still super popular, especially here in Boston. And if you're a manga fan, this is your second home. Manga encompasses genres ranging from romance to slice of life to hard sci-fi to fantasy. They have a much more robust comic reading culture in Japan. It's a lot bigger in a lot of ways than comics in America. The word manga translates as whimsical pictures and manga is a tradition that is centuries and centuries old in Japan. Many of them were scrolls that told stories sequentially through pictures. The famous artist Hokusai called himself a manga artist. The kind of work that he did, the kind of printmaking that he did, was intended to circulate and intended for a popular audience. Osamu Tezuka. Uh, who was uh, the godfather of manga in many ways, really made manga something that kids and adults could relate to as very serious literature. So manga in Japan is generally seen as more ephemeral, I think, than comics in the US, so people often read books of manga and then throw them out. They come out in these sort of big phone book style volumes that are sorted by genre. So as an artist uh, or a writer, you would find your work packaged with that of other artists and writers? Mm -hmm. And then eventually it will be collected into individual tenkoban, as they're called in Japan, which will be pretty much like this. Here, how am I going to read this? So manga, of course, comes from Japan, where the alphabet is read right to left. And it takes a little bit of getting used to, but what you're doing is you are turning the pages right to left. And then on the pages themselves, you are reading them panel by panel, right to left. So you're reading this, then this, then this, which seems intimidating to a lot of people, but really you can get the hang of it in like five minutes. It's interesting here in Boston, I mean, we also had one of the longest running and oldest anime conventions. Yeah, Anime Boston, Boston just had its 15th anniversary this year. Boston was a place that had such a huge international student population. Sure. We had stores that popped up where you could buy, you know, Japanese and Asian media. There's an underground culture that that helped create, um, especially here in Boston, because like you said, it wasn't accessible or easily accessible for a long, long time. People who were fans of those things, we would go out of our way to find them. I've been going to anime conventions for quite a long time, and one of the things that's so interesting about manga in America, it's not just, oh, are you into manga? It's very specific genres. Some people do think of anime as a genre, but I think it makes more sense to talk of anime as a media form. There's all sorts of themes that run through anime. There's comedy, slice of life, horror, suspense, crime dramas, magical fiction, giant robots, or mecha anime. And of course, the reigning king of mecha is Gundam often referred to as the Star Trek of Japan. The interesting part of Gundam is that it was in fact a failure at first. They canceled it after 10 months, and yet fans got into it. Uh, and the complexity of the show meant that fans started to build their own worlds around it. One of the conceits of the show is that there's a special kind of physics that allow the robots to move around. Fans made up uh, textbooks uh, describing this physics. I mean, it's the kind of stuff we saw with, with Star Trek as well. I mean, it's a kind of fandom uh, that was emerging at this time. But something about a DIY aesthetic saying we can take control of the media was happening in both places. And so Gundam gets revived, and Gundam goes on to become one of the biggest franchises uh, in Japan revived by the fans, uh, despite, again, despite the elites who should know better. There's a lot of debate about these robot battle TV shows. They certainly seem to fetishize the power of military technology. On the other hand, they often show the suffering uh, of, of people caught up in the conflagration. It's very difficult because artists tend to make things that are contradictory, that are, that are nuanced, they're subtle. If they just say it's straight, it's not that interesting. And they deal with themes that are a lot more complicated sometimes. There's one scene in Ghost in the Shell that I think is absolutely amazing. There's a, there's a truck driver, and the truck driver is doing all this stuff because he's been controlled by the puppet master, and he's go, stopping at all these little stops, and he's doing these uploads, and when they, they get him and they talk to him, so tell us what you were doing. He was like, well, I was doing this for my daughter, but you don't have a daughter. What do you mean I don't have a daughter? It was like, well, tell me what's in this picture. And it's a picture of him and his daughter. It's like, that picture was my daughter before. And it's like, his, his identity, his, his self was so altered that he had no understanding of what reality was anymore. 
And so like, what is the nature of reality? Are we like the sum of all of our individual parts or is there something bigger than us? What does it mean to be me? If you change different parts of that, do I change? What has been really hot in manga in the last year or so? Like, what are the titles that are like now? My Hero Academia has been really big. It's a shonen or boys series that actually borrows a lot of uh, Western elements, in particular superhero genre elements. It's been really hugely popular with young kids. You know, it's interesting. One of the biggest, you know, anime longest running is about a housewife in Japan, uh, Sazai san. Um, and it's, it's not seen in the US at all. Nobody watches it. But in Japan, everybody watches it. So Anime Boston isn't until next March, but you know what's just as good? That's right, Boston Comic Con. Right here at the Boston Convention Center, August 11th through the 13th. But first, they keep killing it, and it keeps coming back. Oh yeah, I'm talking about Star Trek. Next time on The Secret Worlds of Boston Comic Con. Brought to you by the all-new 2018 Chevy Equinox. Check out Chevy's comic-covered cars at Boston Comic Con, August 11th through the 13th at Boston Convention Center. 2018 Equinox. Everything you need to do everything you want.